Joel Toff with Nephrology Times. I'm here with Dr. Barrett, and we're talking about uh, Sebrip, Sibip Klibumab. Yep, <laughs> Sibip Prenlimab. Took, so me, six, took to me six months to practice that. <laughs> Very good. And so, and I'm embarrassed because I'm actually a site PI on the visionary study, which has just released uh, its nine month data on proteinuria. Yep, so there was a press release 72 hours ago yep. saying that the nine month proteinuria change in those treated with Sibip Prenlimab was significantly greater than that seen with placebo. We don't have any more data than that. Okay. It's so let's rewind a bit. And let's start. So a year ago when we were at Kidney Week, we were in Philadelphia and a late-breaking clinical trial uh, came out and it was map. Well done. <laughs> and that was phase two trial, phase yeah. two data. And, and what do we see with that? So what we saw with that, we saw a significant reduction in proteinuria. Mm -hmm. We saw uh, a stabilization of GFR, mm -hmm. we saw a reduction in the pathogenic form of IgA, GDIGA1, mm -hmm. uh, all tracking very nicely. It was a multi-dose study. It was intravenous in that instance, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, administration of cipiprenlimab, but really confirming that targeting April in IgA nephropathy has the ability to reduce pathogenic forms of IgA that translate through to reductions in proteinuria and hematuria, and over that 12-month period, stabilization of kidney function. Perfect. So, you know, we're used to in nephrology seeing one drug come out and then a bunch of me-2s. Yep. But in IgA, every drug has a different mechanism. And so, ciprofenamab, how does this one work? So, ciprofenamab is a monoclonal antibody that mm -hmm. blocks April. And April is a key cytokine that drives B cell and plasma cell proliferation, survival, and actually IgA class switch combination. So, completely tailored to the fact that IgA nephropathy is driven by pathogenic IgA antibody, uh -huh. this drug is reducing the drive to produce pathogenic IgA. So and that's super exactly, upstream. Absolutely. Super and what upstream. we and that's completely reflected in the trial data from the phase two. Uh -huh. So and when you say that it's completely reflected, like what, what are the things that you're looking for that makes it indicate that, oh, that really is working upstream? So like we you, see reductions in immunoglobulin. So you, okay, you're measuring yep. the immunoglobulin, and, and that's we, the IgG or IgG, the IgG, IgA and them. IgM. Gotcha. All three. And All then three. we also measure the GDIGA1, uh -huh. and that drops as well. So really telling us we're hitting, and actually at this conference, I will be presenting in about two hours' time, uh -huh. levels of immune complexes in that phase two study, looking gotcha. at the level of IgA, IgG immune complexes, and IgM, IgA immune complexes. So trying to pick about pick apart whether what the mechanism is. Absolutely. Now that we've seen the results, Absolutely. why is this happening? That data is starting to come out now. And then, um, okay, so we're, we're, you're reducing these immune complexes. Any safety signal here? So again, you know, it, it yeah, is not indiscriminate. Right. It is indiscriminate. It doesn't specifically target just that IgA that forms immune mm -hmm. complexes. Mm -hmm. So we do see reductions in IgA. We see reductions in IgM. We see lower reductions in IgG, uh, but actually no signal in terms of uh, infections that would be worrying us. There's actually been some data looking at vaccine responses with cibiprenlimab, and actually VIX vaccine responses are preserved in the setting of cibiprenlimab being on board, which is very reassuring in terms of the world we live in now, with pandemics and infections being a, a real worry for us. Does, does that make sense to you? Though? Like, how does yeah, that work? I mean, like, you know, I, I don't think we need to worry too much. Yep. It, it, this is not ablating immune responses. This is toning them down. Gotcha. And it has a much greater effect on IgM and IgA than IgG. And it's the IgG responses we want to see in vaccine yep. responses, recall, particularly recall vaccines. Uh, and so it doesn't surprise me. And it really draws a distinction between those depletion strategies where we know if you give rituximab, there's no point vaccinating someone for at least right. six months. Nothing's happening, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And then... Um, what else do I have to, uh, to say? So this, so the, this press release came out. Presumably, there's going to be a publication that's going to follow shortly. And what we've seen with the other drugs, and when they publish their nine-month proteinuria data, they go into the FDA for accelerated approval. Any reason to think that this, this is going to have a different pathway? No, I think that there's a very clear tried and trusted pathway at the moment yeah. in IGA, which is you present your proteinuria data, you present that data, that cutoff in the clinical trial to the FDA, looking for an accelerated approval while mm -hmm. you are still accumulating the GFR data yep. and that accelerated approval is granted on the basis of proteinuria and you get your full confirmatory approval when you're able to present the two-year GFR data on the entire study. So that is something we saw with Sparsentam, with uh, Neficon yep. and we're likely to see with Iptacapan and possibly Atrocentan which mm -hmm. are other drugs that are very kind close in the same, in the or same have position. just been approved. Excellent, very good. Uh, 
that's all I got. This was great. Great. Lovely to meet Thanks you. Thanks a lot, Doctor. Thank you.